Good morning, Linda. It is time for another question of the day. How's the morning good. going first? So it's going good. Awesome. Good. The week the week's flying by. <laughs> yes, I can't believe it's already almost the weekend. So it today's is. question is from Jessica B, and it's in regards to credit card transactions for multiple QuickBooks accounts. Um, QuickBook, two, they have two QuickBooks online accounts, and they have one credit card. I would like to split the transactions between the two QuickBooks accounts, but I'm not sure the best way to do that. I figure I have to manually enter them. Do I enter them as an expense? Who do I put as the payee? How will the credit card payment be recorded? So you had a couple uh, ideas on this. What do you, what do you think? What's the first step? Or first well, I, I do have this scenario right now. My husband and I own two um, corporations that have credit card. Uh, they have similar companies. They're both rental properties. Mm -hmm. And back in 19, I'm going to say it was even in the 80s, the accountant had me set up a equity account called exchange for when oopsies happen where maybe yeah. somebody puts a deposit in the wrong bank account or if in this case it was for we use it for the credit card so when the credit card is being used and we only have one credit card because the other company is really tiny only has eight units so it doesn't get used that much i put all the things through the one big credit card and then i i just reimburse that account so that account's always zero at the end of the year and it sits on the account that it sits on the company file that has the um, the credit card. So that's the, how we do it. Probably not the greatest way, but it's been done since desktop days. So actually, I mean, it sounds pretty similar to the idea if you were to be mixing up personal and business expenses, you could do yeah. the same. That works really well there, and that's that scenario. Um, we do something just a little bit different. Um, one question we would have first that's a little bit it's important to this, but the two businesses. Yeah. Are they are they actually one business? Are they being reported for taxes under like one uh, as one business? Because if they are, you could do the same effect with one QuickBooks Online company file using locations or they call divisions or businesses. Basically, um, would be one option because it'd be rolled up together anyways. But mm -hmm. if they're two separate corporations, like you were talking about, Linda, or for like with Parkway and Cloud Apps Inc., two separate ones, you do have two separate company files. In that situation, what we do, we would set up a, an account receivable account for this with, uh, we use classes to break out the, the individual type of expenses, but you could do sub accounts as well. So that way we can still use bank rules on a, hopefully it's on a specific, like you said, credit card. So you could do mm -hmm. unique bank rules for that card to try to capture or even do splits out of stuff. Um, the rule then can actually kind of trigger, take care of the transaction stuff. Uh, we did this for electricity billing, for the rent, for a couple of different charges that would come through. And then at the end of every month, all of that stuff is going into one company file. At the end of the month, we ran a report and it gave us a breakout, not only of the account receivable that was owed from the second company to the first one, but it gave us a breakout of the different types of expenses. So we could take that and then create a journal entry in the other company for the same amount and then or you could actually do a check in the other one with the breakout line items below that you would pay back to the first company and i do recommend actually writing a check and paying mm -hmm. the check to the other company so you have that record going across it's just cleaner for audit and you'll get the whole breakout the way you would like to on a pnl still yeah and i actually sat through an audit with a client that he had several businesses and he just used one credit card and mingled them all around. And when he did get audited, the IRS disallowed a lot of them because they don't like when you do that. So that's a good oh. tip. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not happy. And they just, even though they were legitimate expenses for the other businesses, cause he just like, well, I own them all. And I, and I'm a, it, no. And um, they just took them away. And I, I was a little bit surprised, but they took them away because they don't want you commingling that stuff. So it's something to think about. Just get another credit card and maybe have it separate if it's really inactive. I mean, the one we have is just a few transactions a year. Uh -huh. But yeah, if you're doing a lot of transactions, it'll make your life easier too because you can set up those rules for the credit card. And she asked about a type of accounts, that type of transactions. It would be credit card transactions that she'd be using and and, you know, it's, and it's, it is an expense. So. Yeah, well, and be, especially because at that point, you would be able to still take advantage of the bank feeds because you mm -hmm. have your one account linked to one company file. Do not link it in both companies. And nope. 
you don't want to go through, try to link it in both and then exclude part here, part there because your reconciliation would be horrible. So reconcile right. it into one, have it that the business kind of carries the weight of the other mm-hmm. each month and then run that um, adjustment every single month to get yourself paid back would be a good way to go. If it was where it was one, or I'm sorry, you could roll them up into one company. If you go up to your gear icon, you can, I should say, you go first to account and settings. Under the account and settings, you're going to go in and you're going to turn on the ability for classes and locations. This is on the pro series for QuickBooks Online. Turn on uh, track locations and you can call it business, department, division, whatever you would like. We'll call Mm -hmm. this business. Hit save. Now, when you come back, you got to hit done here. If you go back to your gear icon, you can go to all lists and you'll see you have businesses here. Under businesses, if you go new, you can set up a new company. So we'll call this cloud apps. And under the name, is it a sub business? Maybe it has a different title for sales form. So uh, you could have one that says estimates, where another one could say pro forma if you wanted to. Um, invoice versus um, something else for the word invoice. Mm-hmm. Um, the You can have different company names. You can do different logos, if I remember correctly. Um, you can definitely do different phone numbers, addresses, all of that. So you can literally, in a sense, run two businesses inside of one thing of QuickBooks Online and separate everything out. It's great to do that. You just then have to make sure you're breaking out any expenses between the two have to be broken out and assigned to a business or division as it would show up on an invoice or on an expense. Because if you don't break them out, it becomes undefined and that's where everything's kind of meshed together. Yeah. So and that's in the QuickBooks Online Plus version that they need to have. You have to have the, the big old boy bells and whistles, but so much of it can be automated. So once you set it up, it's really worth it, which is why we love QuickBooks Online. Yeah, uh, it's awesome that way. Uh, yeah. To show on like a sales receipt, we'll pull this up real quick. Ooh, Artisani Restaurant, what do they make? Because this Artisani doesn't cook. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to change that because it's your restaurant. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, under business here, we have the ability we could add on Cloud Apps Inc. And now anything that was, whether it's an expense or whether revenue like this, it's now going to be assigned to that specific company. I'll hit save and close, which I should have put a value to it, of course, but we'll go to reports then. And under reports, this will now make it to where if you do profit loss by business or uh, yeah, it'll break it out uh, to where you can see everything. I'll go all dates here just for to do it quickly. Cloud apps, not specified. If I'd actually broken all those out at the, when you're all said and done, there should be nothing and not specified theoretically. And you would have it broken out by the different companies. So hope that uh, kind of shows both ways, uh, goes a little bit deeper into the idea of using divisions or locations. If they're supposed to be all into one, if it's the other way, again, the recap that I was suggesting is whether it's uh, a clearing type account or an AR account, set up an account that's going to show it basically holds the balance the entire time. Use sub accounts or classes to break out the individual amounts. So you can still kind of categorize it that way. And that will make it to where when you write a check from the other company over, do the breakout on there for the same accounts, you'll get a great P and L on both of them then. So the second one, uh, I, I made a misstatement previously, instead of it doing an account receivable, it should be a note receivable that would come through, but the same idea of still having sub accounts or classes that can break out the amounts. Uh, a note receivable, that way it's not showing up as if it's revenue for the business. It's just something that you're lending money out in a sense. You're fronting the money for those expenses. And then by doing that, when the payment comes back in, you're actually taking the money that went in the bank, explaining you're just getting repaid. So it's not revenue. It's not income for that year. And you want to make it zero at the end of the year. Oh, absolutely. Clear I would out do it every record. month. I would do yeah. it every month. Yeah. You want to make sure that both happens. sides, your, your P&L would look good that way. And I, and I often wonder, you know, after just watching you show that, I, I wonder how many people even know that exists in the file, that that location piece is there and that you can make the separate receipts and things like oh, that. Yeah. I mean, it's a great feature to, sh- to, to really... Uh, spotlight today. So it's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. If you have more questions, 
as always, reach out, let us know. We'll do what we can to help you out. And as always, here's wishing you a very successful week.